everyone, Janie here, and I'm sure that most of you have seen my video on making this cute little teacup um, using an envelope punch board. And if you haven't, I'll have the link below in the description box. Just click where it says show more and you can see that. But today I'm going to show you how to make a coffee mug and there is no need for an envelope punch board. It's going to be so easy even a beginner can do it. Let's head on over to my craft table and let me show you. Before we get started, I just wanted to show you the size difference between these. The, the teacups are about two and a half inches tall and the mug is three inches tall. And another difference is you can see this has more of a rounded bottom like a teacup would have. And the mugs have a flat bottom like a mug would have. So. Those are the differences, and remember there's a link below if you want to learn how to make the teacups. There are two different ways to make these. You can make them out of cardstock, or you can make it out of paper. If you make it out of paper, the directions are slightly different because you're going to have to fold some paper over to the inside to make this firmer. And I will show you those directions after I show you this. So if you want to stay tuned to see both, please feel free to. So to make one out of cardstock, you're going to need nine and a half by four and a fourth. That means you can get two of these out of one piece of um, eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock, or you can get you know a couple of them out of 12 by 12, depends on what you're using. But nine and a half by four and a fourth, and we're going to put this right up there with a nine and a half going across the top. And we are going to score it every inch and a half. That means we're going to start off at one and a half inches, three inches, four and a half inches, six inches, seven and a half inches, and nine inches. Oops, I slid over on that one. There we go, nine inches, leaving a little tab. Okay, and you can't see it good on that side, but you can, well, it's hard to see it on the camera on the white side, but you can see the score lines a little bit better. Okay, now we're going to turn it to this direction so that we have four and a fourth inches going across there, and we are going to score this at three inches all the way down, just like that. Okay, and let me see if you can see it on there. Flip it over, that's what we have. So now because it's easier to see the back side than it is the front, um, because the, the back is white without all the design, you're going to take scissors and you're going to cut on each of these score lines just up to that score line right there. We're gonna leave the three inches up here, but down here we're gonna cut on every one of these score lines. Don't cut past this score line right here but just cut up to the score line on all of these all the way across. I decided to bring my craft mat over to make it easier for you to see the contrast because white on white is a little difficult. But as you can see, I've cut all of my little flaps and now we get down to the end and there's this little one here. Well, we are going to just cut that one right off. So I'm just gonna snip right across there and take that piece off. And I'm gonna fold on the score line here to show you that this is like a little tab. You can leave it that way or you can cut the little angles out making it appear more like a little tab. That is up to you. And now we're going to fold on all the rest of the score marks. So they're all going to be mountain folds. So just go right along and fold each of them up. just like that. And then we are going to attach this little tab to that side. So let me get my double-sided tape and I'll be right back. You can use, you know, a little tape runner. I like using my double-sided tape. So this is a half inch and I have my half inch double-sided tape. 
and I'm just going to put it right along there. And cut it off. Okay. Rub it down really good. You can always use, you know, a bone folder to make sure it's down really good. Especially these are raised um, and glittery little flowers on here. So you want to make sure that it's on really good. Peel that off. And we're going to connect it. We want to fold that in so we can see that it's folded. And okay, let me see if I can turn it that way. We're just going to line it right up there along the edge. Okay, just like that. And rub it really good. And we have the beginnings of our mug. So the next thing we're going to do is even though these flaps are going to be folded in, right now they're kind of in the way, so I'm going to fold them out for a minute. And then I'm going to grab my glue. I like using a wet glue. I'm using three in one. You can use, um, like I said, a tape runner or whatever you want. But I have a reason for like using the wet, like, you know, using this. So I'm going to show you really quick is we're going to go around and we're going to glue each flap to the one next to it all the way around the box till we get to the end actually the mug sorry and the reason I like using wet glue is something that you will see here momentarily so I'm putting my glue on putting that flap down and I'm doing this kind of quickly so just kind of follow along push the next flap down And the next flap, we're just going to go all the way around. We'll get to the last one. Put the glue across that. Now you notice that all my flaps are moving, right? I'm going really quick and this is wet glue. But now I'm going to show you the reason why. Because I want to make sure that all the flaps are in the right place. And if you did this with, um, you know, with your double-sided tape your tape runner and you might get one too too tight then your shape may not come out right so then I take something like my glue bottle and I just put it down inside and and rub it around to make sure that everything gets sealed really good and see then I have the right shape here but that gives you the opportunity to kind of move it if it's wet and then the next thing that I like to do after I make sure that everything is in place, the next thing I like to do is I like to go around the edges and just kind of pinch a little bit where the score lines are. Okay, and I'll show you why. Just trust me on this one, but pinch a little bit. It makes it set flatter because a lot of times, you know, those, those scored lines didn't get flattened good when you were gluing them together. So... Now they are all flattened nicely. Um, this is what your bottom looks like. You can cut out a circle to put on the bottom. You can lay this on a piece of paper and trace around it to get the shape. But I'll be honest with you, I've never had a lot of good luck with that. So I actually just leave it the way that it is. So the next step is the handle. For the handle, I used a scrap that was left over. So it's four and a fourth inches long, just like when you cut the paper for the mug. And this was an inch and a half wide and I folded it in half so that it's three fourths of an inch wide. And then at each end, at a half inch, I folded it. And as you can see, I'm already working on curving the handle. But this is the beginnings of your handle. The next thing to do is to take your mug and decide where you want the handle to be. And I'm going to put my handle right here on this side. And so I'm going to find the center and I'm going to go down a half an inch and I'm going to put a pencil mark right there. So measure down this way. This is so much easier if I wasn't on camera, but that's okay. Where'd my pencil go? My pencil disappeared. So I'm finding a spot right here and just putting a little mark. 
I'm doing the same thing from the other end, a half an inch, come here, half an inch, and a little mark. Okay, and actually at this other end, I think I made a mistake and did not do a half an inch. I did three-fourths of an inch, so sorry about that. I have to go up, change that to a half an inch. And I'll just erase that little mark right there. Okay, now I'm going to take um, my little pokey tool here, and I'm going to poke a hole for each of those marks is. And then, where did my little handle go? I am going to poke a hole. So that half inch little fold that we have, okay. I'm gonna poke a hole like right in the middle of it, okay? And I'm gonna do that at each end. So just give me a second here. Okay, there we go. Little hole at each end. Okay, so there's a hole. Actually, it's got little flower stuff around it right now, but it's not going to show. But there's your hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we are going to take a brad. I got this cute little sparkly purple one. I'm going to poke it right through there and right through there into the mug and open it up. Now, after you do this, you can cover that up with something if you'd like. Okay, now I'm going to come down to the other end, and we're going to do the same thing with my little brad go. Okay, I'm going to poke it right through there, and right into there. Reach in here, and open up my brad, and there we have a cute little handle. Now that's one way of doing it. So another way of making a handle is the way that I did on this cup. So let me tell you how to do that. You cut a circle that is two and a half inches around um, diameter, and then you cut another circle out of that that is like an inch and a half in diameter. So you just take two dies or two templates and you cut that. And then you take it and you score it, creating there you go, creating that little space right there so that you can glue it to, to this, glue it to your mug, and then you glue this together. Now, if you wanna actually see this in action, watch the teacup video because I show you how to do this in the video that shows how to make the teacup. Now I'm gonna show you how to make one out of paper. I'm not gonna take you through the whole process, so I don't think this is going to be long. I'm just gonna show you the difference. So on this for paper, you will need nine and a half by seven inches. Okay. And you are going to do the exact same thing. So I'll you're going to turn it just like before. And you are going to score it at one and a fourth and four and a fourth. Okay. And just like before, actually let me grab my craft map. Okay, now you can see better. So we have this section down here. Just like before, we're gonna cut the score marks right up to that score line. Not the big score line at the top, this one right here. All right. Now, on the same side where we cut off that little piece, we're gonna cut off the one right up here at the top. Actually, see if I can, nope, I can't move the camera any better. Okay, so we're gonna cut that off. Okay, so. You're gonna have all your little flaps down here, and you're gonna have this right here. And just like before, we're gonna cut the little ends right there at a little angle, and now it looks like a little tab. Okay, 
Now we're going to fold on all the score lines. And We have this whole section up here that's extra. Okay, score line, and we're going to fold on that score line. Everything is mountain folds. Okay, and just so we have these kind of out of the way, actually, I'll fold in the opposite direction for right now just to get the little flaps out of the way. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that extra piece at the top. All right, so grab yourself some score tape or, um, you know, you can use your little tape runner. I'm making a mess here. Okay, so take your double-sided tape or your tape runner and put the tape right across the top of this. Trying to do this where you can see it, and I'm putting my arm in the way. Brilliant. Okay, anyways, put your tape across the top. And then this is kind of an easier way to do it, but take your tape and put it across the top of the next one. So right under the next score line. Or you can just put it, see how I've put it up here, and then I've put it right here. You can put it there and just put it on the bottom. It doesn't matter as long as there's, you know, a couple of rows. It helps make it stick better. Now, before I do that, I'm also going to put double-sided tape on our little flap right here. So get that on there. And we're going to put it on both sides just for extra stick. Okay, now I'm going to show you a trick. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to be adhering this together. And then before we do, though, since the flaps, you know, since this top thing was folded the other direction, we're going to go ahead and fold each of the score lines one more time, making sure that your cup is going to go together properly. And this little flap right here, it's going to go right inside there, like that, creating your cup. And that's the tricky part because you do not want, <laughs> let me open it back up again here. You don't want the tape that we put there to like seal right away. So this is my trick. Take it, pull your tape, the layer off, except for that last part. Just leave it hanging out there like that. Same thing on this side. Pull it. This is a cool little trick. You should really watch, okay? And now you've got to fold it over and you've got these flaps hanging out the end. Okay. Now we're going to fold this over. Seal it up really good. Okay. And now we're going to take our little tape protector stuff off of these. And, oh, come on. There we go. And we're going to come right over here. And that's where we want to stick it in. Okay, right in that hole. Grab your two little strings that are still hanging out and pull them out. See how cool that was? And yet this is still open. Get everything lined up. And voila! We have made the top part of the cup and I'm not going to take you through this again you guys just know you fold over each flap and adhere it together just like we did on the last one and there you have it so that's why um, the using paper you use more so you can fold it inside and make it sturdier um, doing that with cardstock might look cool but it may be a little difficult because it's a lot thicker so there you go I hope I didn't go too fast. Um, and also I wanted to show you that you can also cut out pieces of cardstock and emboss them and put them in each panel. Um, if you're using a solid paper, you could cut out pretty, um, you know, patterned paper or cardstock to layer onto each panel. It is a fun thing to do. Um, also, if you wanted to 
um, prior to, to making these, you can, um, you know, before you glue it together, you can actually stamp designs on the paper that you're going to use. You can do embossing. There are so many variations that you can do and you can decorate them. And I'll show you a little bit of that here in a minute. I just wanted to give you some quick and easy ideas to use these mugs for. So with Christmas coming up, here's one filled with candies and candy cane and decorated with a Christmas tree um, die cut. I used some gold dazzles from um, Paper Wishes to decorate it, tied a little bow on it. A nice way to give somebody some sweet treats or any time of year. A great way to to give a present um, you can you know fill the cup with either tissue paper or candies and then you know put a little present on the top and I decorated this one with stickles put it around the edges and strategic places here on the paper so that's always a great idea Mother's Day birthdays Valentine's Day and then here's that cute little one that we made um, and it's kind of something more fun for a young girl or a teenager. And I wanted to show how you could put other things in there like a beanie baby or something, but I don't have any beanie babies in my house. All my kids are grown and all I have is fur babies. And guess what? This is a doggy toy. <laughs> so you could put something else in there, a little, a little tiny stuffed animal or beanie baby, you know, some real lollipops or something sticking out of that. Wouldn't that be an absolutely fun birthday gift or Valentine's gift? And of course, I'm showing nothing but things for um, women and children, but these would be great made out of a masculine paper and decorated, you know, for a man. And you could put hot chocolate or little coffee packets or those little, you know, um, Keurig coffee, you know, K-cups or whatever, um, candies, you know, again, a little gift. So... These are just awesome, whether it's for a girl, a guy, a child. There are just so many possibilities, and these are just a few. Thank you all for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it gives you a lot of ideas, because that coffee mug would be so great for Father's Day, even though that's a long ways off. It would be great for Christmas, you know, a little, a little hot chocolate packet in there, or some goodies. There's just going to be so many uses for it. And also don't forget below is the link um, to the teacup tutorial. So have fun everyone. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.